Welcome to week G, the guitar playing gorilla. The guitar has a gold bar, a grate, some glue, and the gorilla's also wearing glasses with golf clubs and gumboots and grass. Oh, and I forgot the glove. I'm starting off by painting the gorilla. The colors I have on my palette for the gorilla's base coat are Mars Black, Mars Grey, Burnt Umber, White and Midnight Blue. But don't worry about the Midnight Blue because I don't use that just yet. For the first layer of the gorilla's fur, you can see I'm not just base coating it in a flat color. I'm using a mix of the Mars Grey and the Mars Black and trying to get a sense of the shadows and the medium tones and some of the lighter areas, but not necessarily the highlight areas. It's a good place to start blocking in the main shape colors. So you can see it's not highly detailed at this point. I'm just blocking in large shapes of shadows and lighter areas. I'll then refine these shapes with further details in the next few layers. Speaking of next layers, I'm now moving on to the second layer of the gorilla's fur. To achieve this look, I'm using the same mix of colors that I used in the first layer, along with a little bit of white. I'm using a very small stipple brush to dry brush these lighter colors over the top of the base coat. And I'm doing it in the same direction that the fur on the gorilla would naturally go. I am using a couple of different reference photos from gorillas just to get a sense of where the fur normally goes. On the arms, I probably would have done it going straight down from the elbow towards the hands. But in reality, after looking at these reference photos, I noticed it actually goes across the arm. This is why I find having multiple reference photos so important. It helps gain an understanding into general characteristics of an animal. Like I mentioned with the fur going in a certain direction across the arm, I noticed that on all of the reference photos I had of all the different types of gorillas, they all had that same characteristic. Another thing that I noticed is that on all of my reference photos, the gorillas heads had a very brown tinge on the very top crest of their heads. See, multiple photos really do help gain an understanding of what an animal looks like and certain traits that they might carry. Their faces, on the other hand, were all so different. I guess just like us humans all have different facial features and different characteristics from person to person, so did the gorillas. I had four reference photos for my gorillas and they were all so different and unique in their own way. Some of the gorillas had an upturned smile or upturned jawline. Others had really deep brows and some of them, like this one, had big fat nostrils. And that's the one I went for because I thought he looked really cute. Not only is it helpful as an artist to have multiple photos and to learn different characteristics of an animal or a tree or a building or anything that we might be looking at. But it's also helpful to have that creative license and not just copy a single photo that you see. With all that being said, the gorilla has now been finished and it's time for me to move on to the guitar. The colors I'm using are Titan Buff, Yellow Oxide, Brown Earth, Burnt Umber and a bit of black. I have a Fender Acoustic at home and I kind of based this guitar off my guitar, but very loosely based. After all, my guitar does not have a gold bar, although I wish it did. <laughs> it does not have a grate for a sound hole and it definitely does not have a glue bottle for the head. My Fender also has a curve in the body just below the neck of the guitar. 
I chose not to put that in and to make that body shape a little bit more symmetrical just because I thought it looked a little bit better in this painting. And this is where having that creative license and just doing what you feel rather than sticking to something that you see comes in very handy. For the glove, I'm basing it off a pair of brown leather gloves that my mum gave me. They were originally her leather gloves that I think she bought when she went to the snows once many moons ago. But I actually can't remember why she gave them to me. I know she gave them to me because she thought I was going to be cold when I went somewhere. But I can't for the life of me remember what it was for or even where I was going. And for all you guitar enthusiasts out there, yes, I know I don't have the correct number of frets on the neck of the guitar and I definitely don't have them in the right places. But let's just call that creative license, shall we? The colours I used for the grate are fairly basic. I've used Mars Grey, Mars Black and a little bit of white. And for the gloves, I've used the original colours that were on my palette for the guitar. A quick break to feed the animals. First up, the magpies. They all start coming once I bring out their food. Second, it's the fishies. As soon as I turn their light on, they all know it's food time. Good thing is, at the same time that I feed the fish, their plants get a feed. Now for Charlie and Coco. They have been waiting so very patiently. Coco pretty much inhales her treat, whereas Charlie likes to chew on it for a few minutes. But I guess all those treats have made these two very tired. But look how cute they are. I love how they cuddle up. I started off by painting the gold bar with yellow oxide, but realized I didn't like that, so I've moved on to the glue bottle while I let that layer dry. For the glue bottle, I've loosely based it off an Elmer's glue bottle that I've got here in my cupboard. It's the stereotypical white bottle with an orange label and a red cap. I've lined the orange label with the red, wrote the word glue on it, with a bit of splash of glue on the label too. And then darkened up the bottle with a little bit of gray for shading. I decided to paint the gold bar black. Now there is a method to my madness and that is when you're painting something metallic, it is always best to put a layer of black down first. It just gives it a more metal finish. I then used a gold paint straight over the top. I've added a touch of Mars Grey to the white paint to get the white of the eyes. A bit of brown earth for the iris and some black for the pupils. I'm now adding some more details to the grate with a wash of brown earth and using that off white for the highlights. To paint his sunglasses, I'm finally using that midnight blue that was on my palette. I've added some black paint to it, using the Mars Grey as a base for the frame and then going over it with the gold. This still gives it a nice gold colour, but it's more of a bright gold rather than a, a harsh metal. I decided to touch up the gorilla a bit. I've lightened up his belly, made his booty a bit more bootylicious, bulked out his biceps a little bit more because he was looking a little weak in that department and gave him a lat on the left hand side because I kind of forgot that earlier. I'm now painting the underside of the guitar a lighter colour. I found that doing it in the burnt umber it got a little bit washed out. And on to the golf clubs. For the golf clubs I'm using Mars Black, Mars Grey, White and I added a touch of brown earth to those mixes just to take away from the blackness. I mean, they're still black, they're just not pitch black and it adds a little bit of warmth to it. I'm using the lightest grey on the top and then some of the off-white for highlights. 
On my palette, I have Thalo Blue Green Shade, Titanium White, Chromium Oxide Green, Benzimidazolone Yellow Medium, and Van Dyke Brown Hue. On a side note, thanks Golden. Thanks for naming your yellow medium Benzimidazolone. I had to Google it to find out how to pronounce it properly because I was having way more trouble than I care to admit. I'm using these colours to do the Gorilla's gumboots. I know I stressed earlier about the importance of having multiple reference photos, but I actually didn't use any for this. I just done it from memory. And you will see I fiddle with it a little bit, trying to get those proportions right. It would have been a lot easier if I'd had a reference photo or even a few. But I don't own a pair of gumboots and I thought I could just wing it. Note to self, next time, take my own advice and get a few reference photos. Overall, I'm okay with the gumboots, so I'm moving on to the grass. I've mixed up a little bit of the yellow into the green, and no, I'm not pronouncing it again. That one is definitely in the don't say it unless you have to, too hard basket. <laughs> And this will be the base of my grass blades. I then add a little bit of the titanium white into the green mix for a few of the highlights. And then the burnt umber into the green mix for the shadows. I've watered down the midnight blue and Van Dyke brown mix to use as a glaze over the top of the gumboots just to soften off the harshness of the highlights and shadows and to make them a little bit darker than what I originally had. I felt like the bright blue of the gumboots and the green of the grass blades were just clashing a little bit. So I decided to darken up the gumboots and tone it down a little bit. And he's done. Our guitar playing gorilla with a gold bar, a grate, a glue stick, golf clubs, glasses, a glove, grass, and gumboots. I think I got it all. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and don't forget that notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. It doesn't cost a thing, but it really does help out my channel. And with that being said, I will see you next week for week H. Bye. Mm -hmm.